Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Each week, our hosts will be interviewing local, regional, and national business leaders to give you an inside peek into how they lead their business to success in the ever-competitive business climate. Welcome to another episode of Monday Morning Coffee of Inside the Firm. We are here still at the AIA at the RCAT booth. I'm here with Tim Ashford of Raynor, Raynor uh, the garage door company. Tim uh, has done basically everything but probably ran the company <laughs> in his long career. Uh, started from installing um, to technical expertise, moved into a management role, helped... Uh, Developed teams uh, in all aspects, moved into sales, uh, supplier relationships, and all that. Welcome inside the firm. Tim, how's it going? Alex, thanks for having me. It's going great. Thanks. Yeah. So, how, just walk me through just a brief history. Did you go from high school to college into this? How did you get into this? Oh, we always like to joke in this industry that once you get in the garage door industry, you don't get out of it. And that's been true for me and a lot of people I know. And it's, I don't know if anybody grows up says, um, hey, I, I want to be a garage door salesman or, sure. or installers or something like that. Unless, of course, maybe your father owned the business or whatnot. But for me, I went from high school and then into college and I needed a job while I was in college. And uh, my Smart. Fr- yeah, you know, you got to pay the bills. My uh, girlfriend at the time, she's now my wife, her father had a garage door business. And I said, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to be a plumber or electrician or whatever it was, you know, to, to supplement the income. And he says, no, 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 come work for me. We'll put, teach you how to put in garage doors. And, uh, and uh, she said, once you do it, you'll never get out. Don't do it to him. And I said, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be for a couple of summers. And uh, yeah. here we are 22 years later, still in the garage door business. But it's been very rewarding. Um, and it's a great industry because it serves a lot of needs for people, right? You've got a service aspect, you've got a new product aspect of it, and it's something that's totally necessary, whether it be for residential, everybody has a door on their home, or most people do, garage door on their home, uh, or for commercial. Businesses don't run without garage doors. Yep. How did you manage and your company manage the whole COVID and the supply chain issues? And how is that going now? Because I remember ordering products and literally having a house basically built and waiting for a garage door. I can't remember. If, I'm not going to put the blame on you guys because I don't know if it was your door or not. But how, how has that been? It's been a challenge. And I think it, if you were to ask any anyone at the show, uh, certainly any one of my competitors, it's been very challenging. So garage doors uh, have a lot of components in them. They have steel, aluminum, not very many, but there's a few import products. Um, and one of the things that set Rainer apart through the pandemic, through 2020, 2021, and and more so into 2021 with uh, the supply chain aspect, was we manufacture the vast majority of things ourselves in-house. So our purchasing and procurement team is fantastic. They have great relationships with the raw material suppliers. So, you know, when we needed steel, say, um, we were at the top of the list of being able to get it because we have such good relationships and our purchase volume is big enough where um, we weren't buying on spot. We had contract and so on. So there was some a few, you know, um, procedural things, I guess, that helped us. But a lot of it boiled down to relationships and communication. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say that we didn't stub our toe as most people did. Of um, course. But the reality is, is that uh, we over communicate. And uh, a big part of that was communicating with our customers from the product procurement side all the way through to when they would expect their finished garage door. I swear that a majority of business leadership in college could be, hey, how to communicate (laughs) and then practice communicating. And like that sets so many businesses apart from the other. Hey, I'm coming. Hey, I'll be there. Hey, there's a delay, you know, Whatever it is, just letting the client know, letting the customers know, and, and working through it. Um, do you own the factories? In is that in here? Is that in China, Mexico? Where's so all of our product is produced in uh, the vast majority of our product is produced in either our Mississauga, Ontario factory, okay, which Canada, Canada, which services hey. our Canadian customers, 
or, and that's you know a few product lines there, but a vast majority of ours produced right here in Illinois, in Dixon, Illinois. Oh, so, awesome. So, uh, again, products and material, raw material comes from all over the country and all over the globe, but we manufacture the vast majority of everything right here in the United States of America. That's good to know. Um, what, are the, what are your different types of garage doors made of? So, what are the different options of what they can be made of? Yeah, I would say that we've got the bulk of, of garage doors nowadays, and when I say nowadays in the past 30 years, are made out of steel. And there's some variation of steel. So you have either a non-insulated door, commonly referred to maybe as a pan door, but it's just an outside skin of steel and there's no insulation in it. Then you have like garage doors that have insulation inserts in them. And then you have doors that are steel exterior, steel interior, and they have some form of insulation between the two skins, whether it be polystyrene insulation or injected polyurethane insulation. And of course, there's different pros and cons. And, and one of the biggest features that you pay for uh, when you go to that polyurethane um, is the value it brings in terms of thermal properties. So they have air infiltration ratings, they have higher U factor ratings, things like that. So that's the vast majority of sectional doors, uh, coiling doors, are either aluminum or steel, mm -hmm. uh, with, again, the majority of them being steel. And then if you see the doors with the big windows in them, those are usually made out of aluminum extrusion. So they have a lot of glass component, but they're, the frames are made out of aluminum. And then I would say on the specialty side, um, there's some more exotic materials out there like fabric, uh, polyethylene fabrics, things like that. Um, but they're a, a smaller portion of the overall sales. Gotcha. Um, what's Renault's process? and team kind of dynamic like? From the manufacturing perspective, we've got, again, our product made either in Illinois or Ontario, and both of them operate uh, similarly in that we have vice president of manufacturing, and then, of course, the subsequent teams that uh, support that. Uh, we bring, of course, the raw material in. We manufacture in um, our different factories. And, and the great thing uh, that actually just happened with Rainer is we acquired almost 600,000 square feet of new warehouse. So ah. our capacity is coming online to uh, support the demand, which is fantastic. Um, but, you know, our manufacturing team works really, really closely with our uh, sales team, our procurement team. Um, our marketing teams so that, as you mentioned earlier, it's the communication to our customers. And I really feel like there's some great synergies between what's happening with things being made, with what's being communicated to the customers, and uh, what's being sold. So we have a lot of you know cross-functional meetings, cross-functional teams that really create a lot of good synergies between the uh, departments so that nobody's operating in a silo. Yeah, awesome. Um, are you seeing any sort of new trends or new things that you're developing? Um, what are, I feel like people are more looking to glass or that modern or maybe trying to, but um, it's a little bit more expensive, but it depends. I don't think the, the glass, and you might, might not be glass inside, there might be a plastic. It isn't ex as expensive when you do it in a garage versus trying to do it in your house, because people do that in our house too. Do you do both of those? Uh, yes, we do both. Yeah. So we, I mean, when you talk about both, we have there's a lot of new applications for garage doors. So trends are always more, are always driving towards higher efficiencies, whether it be speed efficiency, how quickly the door operates, particularly industrial applications. So how quickly can that door operate to allow flow of product? How durable is the product? So if it happens to get run into with a forklift or mm -hmm. something like that, a pallet jack, is it able to still function? And then how efficient is the product in terms of thermal efficiency? So daylight views, um, what's the, the lowest air infiltration, the uh, lowest U factors, things like that. So we're always driving our products towards the highest uh, performance in any one of those areas. You talk about specific trends, uh, like on the commercial side, it used to be you could have two offerings, a white door and a brown door. Yes. And everybody's okay with that. Um, but then, now, then three, then a tan door. And a tan door. And yeah. now, if you aren't, if a manufacturer doesn't offer half a dozen colors or more, um, you're kind of out of the running. A lot of new commercial buildings, uh, you'll see blacks and grays and some of the more exotic colors. You'll see windows instead of going a row of horizontal windows, they'll be vertical windows. Mm, and again, yeah. not just on residential, on commercial as well. So I think the commercial space, depending on the application, of course, is taking a lot of cues from the residential, which I think is exciting because, um, you know, it really makes a, a building design stand out. Yeah. Um what percentage are you residential versus commercial in sales? 
So, Rainer, we're about like, it depends on the year. You know, yeah. We sold more residential the last couple of years than we had the years before just because that was where the market was shifting. But we're like 60, 40, 65, 35 um, commercial versus residential. We're skewed more towards commercial. And again, that varies year to year depending on where the market trends are. Um, but I would say that commercial sectional right now is exceptionally strong. There's a lot of warehouse construction going on. There's a lot of um, industrial work taking place, um, which I think was put on hold maybe through 2020. It was starting to be built in 2021, and the demand for the garage doors on industrial commercial space is there now. What, what's your different sales funnels? Meaning, like, are you at Home Depot? Are you through the website? Are you, you know, do commercial people just, you know, contact them through sales rep? What's that? What's those different avenues and processes like? We have about three distinct channels of sales. We've got our dealer network. So we've got over 750 independent dealers around the country that represent our product and we sell to them, they sell to an end user. So whether it be a homeowner or a general contractor um, that's erecting a building, those customers are uh, how we go to market. The second channel of sales is our national account channel. Those I put them in the category of more of a corporate to corporate relationship. So you have a large corporation that wants to, we don't sell direct, but they want to get pricing and product and things like that aligned. And then they want to in turn work with a large national account installing type customer. So the synergy there is that the, they want to kind of, I won't say they're trying to cut out the dealer because um, they aren't. It's just that the scale in terms of geography and uh, purchase volume is beyond what a local dealer could handle. So um, there's a national account channel sales. And then our third one is our architectural channel sales. While we don't collect a purchase order from an architect, um, we certainly worked with architects very heavily to um, help them put our product in their building. And I view it as a sales channel because you know, our architect customers can choose to do business with anyone, but we want them to do business with Rainer because of a lot of different reasons. So those yeah. are the three main uh, kind of categories of sales. What are those different reasons? On the architect side, the thing that really separates Rainer apart is all of my regional sales managers, all of Rainer's regional sales managers work with architects within their defined um, sales territory. So they do lunch and learns with them. They all architects in their region have their contact information. So they are kind of a first line of contact when it comes to needing information. That's that's one part. The second part is all the tools that we have on the back side of it. We've got every one of our commercial products uh, is has a BIM object for it. So yeah, it's that's huge. support on the back side. Um, and then if an architect needs something, uh, we're not, you know, a company that's based overseas or such a large company that we can't give that personalized touch. So they can literally call our marketing department, um, Kelly or Stacy or Laura, any of the um, team on the marketing side is able to say, hey, I'll get you that hand sample or that color sample within you know the next few days. So we have some a lot of nice touch points that make the architect's job easier. Let's be honest, architects have so much to worry about in their building design. They don't want to worry about all the minutiae of how the garage door is going to function and how much clearance they need and all that. They want to be able to pick up the phone or shoot an email off and get that information quickly. And that's where I think we meet them where they uh, have the greatest need. Do you do custom door sizes? Absolutely, yes. All yeah. all of our doors, um, and it depends on the model. Some are more customizable than others, but um, in like say the full view doors, they can go in eighth inch increments, both in height and width. Uh, eight, eight inch? One eighth inch increments. Oh, an eighth inch. Yes. I thought you said eight, eight inch. I was like, why not do six inches if you're gonna do, you know, because, uh, but an eighth inch is, yeah. Yes, so that's, there's some products that are highly customizable. Rolling Steel's another one that is highly customizable. Some of the more traditional polyurethane doors, they'll go in like one inch increments. So again, very customizable, but. Yeah, Um. going back to the beginning, I forgot to ask this. Why, why is there the saying, once you get in garage doors, you don't get out? Like, where? It's a great, it's a great question. Um, I've got a lot of friends and colleagues in the industry, and I think it really boils down to um, the network. Uh, it's a, a relatively small industry, so you tend to make friends, um, even if you change companies and work in other parts of the country, have friends in the business. The other thing is, I think it ha is a great path with a lot of different things. If you want to, if you're great with your hands and you want to keep working in the field, you can install, you can troubleshoot, you can work on the technical side of things. Um, so there's that pathway. If you want to get into sales, it's a great entry point into um, 
you know, a sales channel. And you, there's a lot of different areas where you can work. You can work on the dealer level in a local market. You can work for a manufacturer in a lot of different areas um, you know, across the country. So I, I think that's one part of it. And I think the other thing is it's a resilient industry. You are uh, relatively recession proof. You're relatively, um, um, and I won't say immune because nobody is, but immune from some of the ups and downs no pun intended, um, yeah. because the reality is, is, is there's a need for it. Everybody needs a garage door uh, to keep either their home or their business functioning properly. Yeah. Do you find that most maybe homeowners or architects or anyone are, and this might be an error in, in, in my assumption, they're focused on what the door looks like, you know, where the windows are placed and what the color is. But a huge other component is, you know, what's the motor? How loud is it? Can you control it from your phone? You know, all those types of things and anything new coming out, you know? Uh, you bring up a great point, Alex. I think that the when, whenever we do a sales process, whether it be us or with um, an architect or a, a dealer with a homeowner, is what are the core features that you want? Is it, I need this door to operate quickly or I need this door to have a lot of insulation quality or it's in a parking structure and there's apartments up above it. I need it to be very quiet. So you narrow down what the needs are and then you build the product from there. And you're right, there's absolutely a lot of technology built into garage door openers nowadays, um, specifically on the residential side. They're Bluetooth enabled, they'll take over the air updates uh, for software. You can control them with your phone. Um, From uh, miles and states of way. Absolutely. I know people, because we have a complex and we know people, so they're like, hey, can you throw that package in my garage? I'll open the door for you. But, you know, It works with Amazon Key, that sort of thing. Ah, uh, the other yeah. thing is that it will alert you with cameras. Uh, a lot of our residential operators have a built-in camera. So in the garage in door? In the garage door opener. Looking inside, outside, or both? Inside the garage. So if you have that Amazon delivery driver that you open the door for them, with, or they open the door with the code, you can verify that they left the package there and that the door was closed behind them. Yeah, and they didn't take anything. Yeah, and They didn't take anything, yes. Very cool. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one, but it makes complete sense that they do that. Is that the newest thing? Is That's probably one of the newest things is Amazon Key um, and then the the built-in cameras. Yeah, that's probably the newest thing. You know, and then there's diagnostics things. Like on the commercial side, there's the boards and the systems on the commercial side of things really diagnose how many cycles. Is there something um, that has tripped the... Uh, the photo eye system or the reversing edge, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of diagnostic stuff built into commercial operators um, that really put tools in the hands of um, facility managers so that they can, you know, maybe it wasn't the correct product that was installed in the first place. Maybe they need to do something bigger or faster or something like that. And so it really helps them narrow that decision process down the road too. Yeah. What was one of the hardest challenges in your whole career? Maybe a mess up, maybe an error, maybe a lesson you learned from, maybe just like a catastrophe of a project or relationship uh, that maybe you had to work to resolve? It's hard to pinpoint. I'm sure there's been, you know, I'm sure there's been some. I, I don't know that I can pinpoint like a, a catastrophe or something major. I would say that all of the things that I have overcome in my career that have been challenging um, have been overcome through going back to our previous part of the conversation, overcome through communication. If I am able to articulate to a customer what the mistake is, uh, if I owned it, owning up to it, if it's even if I didn't cause it, if it's something that we as a company have done, owning up to it and owning the problem, uh, to, conversations tend to go a lot better. And so I would say there's never been this major catastrophe. Um, there's been challenges. I mean, in 22 years in, in any industry, you're going to run into challenges. Um, but I think that approaching every situation uh, with integrity and with uh, communication and frankly t approaching it like you would want to be approached in the same situation has helped uh, mitigate many, many of those uh, uncomfortable situations. Absolutely. Um, any other idea that we haven't talked about and then where would you like to point people to go to, to learn more, to see what you have to offer, to dive deeper? Yes, I would say that one point we haven't talked about is just the importance of security and functionality of a garage door. I think a lot of times people think on the residential side, it's a door on my house, it goes open and closed, but it actually goes open and closed 10, 12 times a day. It's the main front door to your home. You need to make sure that whoever is putting that door in is very well qualified um, because again 
you have a four or 500 pound piece of equipment moving above your, your family, your, your new vehicle, whatever it is, you wanna make sure it's installed properly. So that's one of the things. Um, and then safety, let's make sure that everything is hooked up properly, the photo eyes or the reversing edge on commercial doors, that sort of thing. So safety I have a is quick a question. One. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, so all my new garage doors have that thing at the bottom where the safety thing and I grew up when they didn't have that and I got squished under a garage door and it hurt mm -hmm. <laughs> luckily my friends were there and all that because you know I don't know what we were doing you'd always hit it and you'd always try to dive under and run through you know sometimes you get caught is that a law standard now or do everyone just does that no it's UL 325 if you sell a garage door opener both residentially and commercially in the United States commercially since 2010 and residentially since 1995 I believe 94 yeah, somewhere that's in there when I was getting squished yeah they have to have that as a reversing feature unlike the commercial side if you don't have a reversing either photo eye system or electric edge you have to have a monitored wall button meaning you have to hold the button in to make oh, it go open and close so so you can see what exactly and a lot of the new operators have built-in features so if if one, any one of those error um, those reversing features isn't working properly a secondary system will kick in so they know again I'm, I'm generalizing here but a garage door opener knows how hard it's having to push or pull that door open so let's say let's say you just have a broken spring on it it's not going to try and pull that door open knowing that it's weighing twice as much as it normally should. So it'll not open the door. It'll alert you to call a maintenance person. So there's a lot of things like that built in. Yeah, awesome. Sorry to cut you off, but I think you were talking about security. So maybe we kind of... Yeah, security yeah. is the other thing is making sure, whether it's on a commercial door, you have a timer to close it behind you. Making sure that you have the right door um, for the application. I mean, if you're trying to secure a building uh, in, a, in a neighborhood, there's, there's heavier gauge steel that you can put on the door. There's different track systems that make it harder to break into. So I think security is a big part of it also. Um, and just pairing, again... I've said it a few times, pairing that right door to their right application. Absolutely. Okay. Leave us with where can people go to learn more, to dive deeper if they need to. Absolutely. You can and go give out your personal phone number and all that. <laughs> you can go to our website. It's Rainer, R-A-Y-N-O-R.com. And we actually have a whole architect's corner there. We also have commercial, residential, and so on. You can get any information you need there. And it has a contact us form uh, where we'll get your contact information to whoever can help you best. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Tim. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for being on Inside the Firm. Alex, thank you very much.